The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Are you not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status? Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, Whose image is this? And whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that he said to them, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. There is a story of a teacher with her, with her kindergarten students, and the lesson was about religion. And the teacher was about to begin the lecture, but one of the kindergarten students said, should we not start with a prayer? And the teacher said, mm, I don't believe in prayer. I don't believe in God. See? I just want to teach you what I have learned about religion, even if I don't believe it. I am an atheist. And then he asked, she asked her students, do you want to be atheists? Of course, you know, when a teacher who is in authority asks little children who doesn't know anything about what he's talking about, would say, yes, who wants to be an atheist? All of them practically raised their hands except for one child. And so the teacher said, you don't want to be an atheist? And the child said, no. I am a Catholic. And the teacher asked her sarcastically, why are you a Catholic? And the student, the, the child said, because my mother is a Catholic. My father is a Catholic, so I am a Catholic. The teacher looked at her and said, so if your father is stupid and your mother is stupid, what are you? And the child said, an atheist. See? You see, my dear friends, this child is a person with character. She doesn't compromise her beliefs, her principles, her deepest convictions, just because she wanted to please somebody. You know, the devil is very wise now. He doesn't tempt us to commit sin outright. The devil will not tell us, oh, take drugs, drink alcohol, engage in pornography or violence. And if you do that, you will ruin your life. You will destroy your family. No, the devil does not tempt us that way. The devil would make sin look very attractive, wholesome, even 
right. So what does the devil tell us when he wants to tempt us? He would say, hey, you need to relax. You need to feel good. You have so much pressure because of this pandemic. Nagkakaroon katuloy ng mga mental problems. You know, your friends, look at them. They're all fine. They all do the same thing. They drink. They take drugs. They watch porn. They engage in violence. And do this, and you will forget your problems. Sex is exciting. You're in love. How can it be wrong if it feels so right? So engage in it, even if you're not married. To students, the devil would tell them, you have plenty of time, no? Hindi niya sasabihin na masama ang hindi mag-aral. Masama yung laging wini-waste mo ang time mo. The devil would say, you have plenty of time. Play your favorite video games. Watch your favorite next Netflix films, your Korean telenovelas. Surf the internet. Enjoy chatting with your friends up to sawa. Post your messages, pictures, and videos on your Facebook. Enjoy yourself. It's later than you think. Saka ka na tumigil sa ganyan pag malapit na ang exams. No? Sa mga politiko, he would not tell them, oh, be honest, otherwise you will be punished. No, he would say, lie, cheat, steal from the people. But do not get caught. Huwag ka lang pahuhuli. At pag nahuli ka, huwag kang aamin. You see, my dear friends, the devil does not tempt us outrightly to commit sin. He wants us to compromise our deepest convictions, our principles, in order that we neglect doing good, we become habituated, addicted to doing good, or to doing bad, rather than doing good. You know, sometimes I wonder, why are so many people today depressed? Why are there so many people sad? Why are there so many people feel so enclosed in one place, parang claustrophobic na? They want to go away, be free. Many people are depressed today, not because of the good things they cannot do, but rather because of the bad things they cannot stop doing. They have lost their sense of purpose. They have lost their convictions. They have lost their principles in life. So living by compromise, that is the surest way to hell. The antidote to it is to live by conviction. Live by conviction. See, what is a conviction? A conviction is a solid, immovable belief or principle that we are willing to take a stand for regardless of the consequences. Once we have made a decision which we know is right and we are fully convinced of it, we will stand by it no matter what happens. Living by conviction. This is the example given to us by Jesus and all his good followers. For instance, how did Jesus live, if we ask ourselves? Jesus lived very simply, and his life is summarized in the Acts of the Apostles in five words. He went about doing good. See? His purpose in life is to do good. His purpose in life is to do the will of the Father, which is to do good to others, to save us, to heal us of our infirmities. Yan ang prinsipyo niya sa buhay. I came here to do the will of my Father, and that is to do good to you, to love you. Mary, what was her principle in life? Sinabi niya sa anghel, let your will be done to me according to your word. So despite all the difficulties, 
trials, heartaches that she encountered, she remained faithful to God. Kasi yun ang prinsipyo niya sa buhay. Let God's will be done to me. Saint Peter, what was his principle of life? He betrayed Jesus three times. But then, at one point in his life, he said, To whom else shall we go, Lord? You have the words of eternal life. Kaya kahit paulit-ulit siyang umiiwas sa Panginoon, how many times did he fall down? How many times did he betray Jesus? How many times did he sink very low and yet he discovered however low he sunk because of his sins, Jesus met him where he was. See? And lifted him up to a place of maturity and greater faith. St. Paul, his principle in life is, it is no longer I who live, but Jesus who lives in me. See? That's why, sabi niya, I was lost several times. I was in prison. I have suffered so many things. But for me, this is nothing because it is Jesus who is living in me. Si Mother Teresa, anong prinsipyo niya sa buhay? Ang sabi niya doon sa kanyang isang reporter, I came here to seek the last, the least, the lowly, and the lost. She spent her life for that purpose, for that principle. You know, there is a very famous theologian, Karl Barth, who has written so many books. And yet, when he was asked, how would you summarize all these books? Very simply, ang sabi niya, I can summarize what I have written in that verse which I learned in my kindergarten days. And this is it. Jesus loves me. Yes, I know. For the Bible tells me so. That was his principle in life. That's why whatever he wrote, it is to proclaim God's love for him and for us. Si Padre Pio, ang dami-dami niyang naging trial sa buhay. Nagkasugat-sugat ang kanyang katawan. Hindi siya makapagsalita. The devil oppressed him. And yet, anong prinsipyo niya sa buhay? Sabi niya, pray, hope, don't worry. Worry is useless. God is merciful. He hinged his life on God's mercy. And finally, yung malapit ng i-canonize, si Carlo Acutis, isang batang bata na Italian who was a very good the person, a very good a technician, an operator of the internet, ang kanyang prinsipyo sa buhay, simple lang. Sabi niya, God made us originals. That's why we should not die like photocopies of somebody else. See? Napakaganda ng prinsipyo niya sa buhay. Kaya kahit na matay siya, at a very young age, he was original. Whatever he did, it was to proclaim the message of God through the internet, through Facebook and so many other social media. He used this in order to make people discover their original self. So ganun din ang ating Panginoong Jesus. My dear friends, He never lived in compromises. Kaya nga yung mga pariseyo sa ating ibanghelyo who wanted to trap Him by making Him compromise with them. See? To compromise with the Romans or with the Pharisees. Ang sinabi lang ni Jesus, No. Do what is right. Live according to your conviction. Live according to your principles. That is the best way to live. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.